In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to click on this link and, and look at this video. Uh, my name is Kevin Karam. I'm a Jesuit uh, in St. Louis, uh, studying for studies uh, philosophy at St. Louis University. Uh, the purpose of this podcast, I wanted to take some time to uh, take a moment and walk through uh, in a prayerful way the new encyclical that Pope Francis is coming out with tomorrow. Uh, on what would be the Feast of St. Francis. Uh, St. Francis is also my patron saint, so actually uh, this entire pontificate has been really uh, important to me. Uh, Francis is my baptismal name. Uh, it was my grandfather's name. Uh, so uh, the name Francis, especially St. Francis of Assisi, holds a very special place in my heart. So the purpose of kind of walking through this encyclical is mainly because uh, I thought Laudato Si was a wonderful encyclical. Um, I think it really helped open my eyes to a lot of different realities around the world. I think one of the most disappointing things, and one of the realities it opened my eyes to, was how it was received. Everyone filtered this encyclical through their political lens, and you saw it increasingly, especially in our media, uh, whether it was Catholic media or secular media, people wanted to take this encyclical and justify their own preconceived notions, which I thought was really disappointing. One of the great richnesses of La Dato Si that I found was the fact that uh, Pope Francis was drawing attention to the many difficulties that different communities, uh, poor communities around the world, suffer as regards to environmental disasters. And I felt it was such a beautiful way to connect with people whom I'll probably never meet um, that I can sympathize with their, uh, with their, um, with the disasters that they're enduring, um, and I can connect with them through Christian uh, charity um, and community. I thought that was a really missed piece of uh, La Dato Si that thoroughly enriched me in my awareness, or at least in my understanding of how my actions in my own life. Uh, can impact others in completely different countries. I think that's really important to remember. So instead of getting political, um, I hope to be a voice that can walk through this new encyclical, Tutti frate uh, Fratelli Tutti, in a very prayerful way, um, in a way that... Uh, in a way that we're able to read the encyclical and pull out what are the points of prayer? Um, what are the points that should be changing our lives uh, in this encyclical? I think that's very important for us to view it through that lens and maybe set aside the political. And so to begin this project, um, I wanted to read briefly what's called the presupposition. This is something that uh, is found in St. Ignatius's St. Ignatius of Loyola's spiritual exercises. I'm sure it's an ancient idea. This isn't anything new, but uh, it, it's very well stated um, in Saint Ignat by St. Ignatius. Uh, what the presupposition is, uh, it's basically the attitude that Ignatius calls for that should be between uh, a retreat director and a retreatant. Uh, because naturally there might arise disagreements of interpretations of this sort or that sort. So Ignatius wanted to provide some guidance on how a retreat director and the retreatant should engage each other. And I think this is this kind of engagement, this presupposition of goodwill, um, can be extrapolated throughout all of our lives. How do we engage people of a different political mindset? Uh, how do we engage people in general of a, of a different religion, of a different culture, whatever it may be? But what is a way to engage people um, that actually allows for communication and building of community, even when there's disagreement. 
So the presupposition reads like this. That the relations between he who gives the retreat and those who make it may be as agreeable and as profitable as possible. Neither must lose sight of this advice. Every good and pious Christian must be disposed to receive in a favorable sense and to take in good part every word susceptible of being so received and understood, rather than to take it in a rigorous and objectionable sense. If it happen that the expression is not defensible, ask the person in his intention in saying it, and if he is really in error, point it out to him in a charitable manner, that he may set himself right on the point. So what does that mean? Essentially, it means do not put yourself uh, in an attitude that is rigorous and objectional. Do not immediately, uh, you know, some people will say things and it, and it immediately elicts a reaction within us. It's something we can feel deep inside of ourselves. I feel it frequently uh, when I disagree with somebody on something. And yeah, it happens a lot. Um, but I feel it often where it's almost like uh, my, like, uh, I don't know, the metaphysical reality just behind my face is so stiff. It, I just feel myself becoming rigid as a wall that everything they're saying, uh, you can almost feel the words just bouncing off of you. They're not penetrating any part of you. Um, I, would, I would call that um, a rigorous and objectionable sense of approaching somebody else's words. Uh, so we must rather, instead, we must take in every good part of what they are saying. So you need to be able to open yourself up in order to recognize the goodness in what somebody is saying. Because even if they have a, um, an objectionable position, something they're saying is good. And that's the point you need to start off with. Um, and I think that was a failure of, uh, you know, most Americans, especially the media, that was a failure on their part of how to receive Laudato Si. Um, and I suppose it can happen in both extremes where uh, one side is too rigid and can't uh, let anything penetrate them. But on the opposite side, uh, they only plucked out the good they wanted to hear. Uh, they did not allow themselves to be challenged. Again, that can be a, that can be a rigorous and objectionable sense where you only where you only allow those things to penetrate you that you agree with. Um, we must recognize the good before we recognize what we agree with. So all that being said, um, I'm really excited for this new encyclical to come out. Uh, comes out tomorrow. Um, and I think it's going to be a fruitful. Uh, I think it's going to be a fruitful document if if we read it in a sense of charity and openness to the words of the Holy Father and the movements of the Holy Spirit that come from it. So, taking a brief look, um, a precursory look, without any real information at the encyclical, uh, the in, the new encyclical is called uh, Fratelli Tutti, and uh, you know this means the brothers and sisters all. At least that's the translation I've gleaned from it from my very limited study of Italian. Of course, there's already controversy around it, and this is what I would call beginning of that objectionable sense uh, that the, the gendered linguistics of it are inappropriate. And I can understand, uh, I can definitely understand that viewpoint. It's, it's, un it's understandable for some people to recognize that as well. That's a masculine plural form of the word brothers. Um, fratello is brother. And then in Italian, you have sorello, uh, sorella, which is sister. So it is a completely different word. It's not like in Spanish where you have hermano, hermana. Um, it is a completely different word. But it is understood, and it has been in the Italian language, that uh, the male plural can also acknowledge a mixed gender, can also acknowledge a mixed company. But I think it is important to recognize that, one, the context is this is the Pope speaking to the universal church. So when he says fratelli tutti, it's very safe to presume the goodwill of the Pope, meaning that he is acknowledging all people of goodwill. He is not excluding anyone. So now that we've got all of that like political stuff out of the way, um, 
what I do think this encyclical will be about, my hope and my understanding of one article I read online, is that it will be about our, our human unity. Uh, the Pope calling us uh, back to unity. And we can see like how perfect the timing of this uh, encyclical is, especially in this time of great division, where it almost seems like uh, people of different political ideas live in two completely different worlds, where it seems like uh, when you discuss with somebody uh, topics that have disagreements within them, it is impossible to view that person with an opposing view as anything but evil. Uh, these are tragedies of our human condition. This is a, a consequence of our hubris, of our fallen state, and we need to resist that uh, tendency towards division. Um, in Latin, uh, the word to divide is uh, diabolo, or at least some sort of rendering of it. But diabolic comes from uh, the Latin word meaning to divide. And so that which divides us is diabolic. And we need to resist it. We need to counter it. We need to put primarily our human unity first. Uh, my hope is that's what the Pope will be calling for out of this new encyclical. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading it. Uh, definitely looking forward for some points of hope especially as we enter this uh, election as Americans. Um, so I think the best we can do right now, uh, you know, is to continue to pray to the Lord for hope, uh, reconciliation, uh, and unity within our Christian community, and also unity within our human community worldwide. Uh, just at every level of your communal identity, whether it's within your family, within your uh, country, or within your city, within your country, within the world, at every level of humanity, we need healing unity. So let us all pray together for that unity that only the Lord can provide. We ask our, we ask our Savior, Jesus Christ, to step in, uh, that his sacrifice may be our unifying oneness. And even for those who do not believe in the Christian faith or who do not believe in the salvation of Jesus Christ, we, we pray for their unity with us, that even though we may disagree in the sense of worship, we can still view each other as made in the image and likeness of God. Such is our hope. All these things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this divine confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. Before thee we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. I'll get my memorized prayers uh, a little better next time. Uh, I'm sure I'll hopefully memorize these prayers more precisely as time goes on. But, but thank you very much for sitting with me and joining with me. Um, I hope you find some fruit out of this. Uh, and uh, the Going Forward Project, I'll be uh, recording my own little audiobook um, of the encyclical, understanding most people won't get the chance to read it. Um, and I'll be posting little commentaries on the sections that I read. Again, trying to draw the fruit that we can get from prayer um, and trying to draw those uh, notes of spiritual enrichment, which we can ultimately incarnate into the world as a people of Christ. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, please leave any comments below in the comment section. Um, I look forward to hearing uh, your understanding of how I might be able to improve this uh, presentation. Um, things you liked. I'm afraid to ask things you didn't like, but please, uh, anything, uh, I'll take it in a goodwill spirit. So thank you very much. <laughs>